All right. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. Happy Friday, everybody. Peter, what's up? Thanks so much. Uh, this is Peter's uh, request to do this uh, session tonight. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'll talk enough about this stuff that you'll feel at ease to experiment, be able to uh, try some stuff out. There's no reason to be fearful of alternate tunings. That's what we're doing tonight, alternate tunings. So I thought I'd grab an acoustic. Of course, this is applicable to acoustics and electrics, all right? HH, what's up in Ottawa? A beautiful night there. Excellent news. Thanks for joining. Danny, dry Northeast Arkansas. like to hear that. Welcome, welcome. Dennis, what's up? Steve, what's going on? He's got the snark out. Yes, I've got the snark. For those of you who do not know what the snark is, the clip-on tuner is just one of the many brands of clip-on tuners. Since we're going to be doing a little bit of retuning and trying out different tunings tonight, uh, if you happen to have a clip-on tuner or any kind of tuner, if you've got the pedal tuner, whatever, uh, what have you, uh, that's going to come in handy tonight. Okay. Uh, so there we go. We're going to have that going. Uh, for those of you joining for the first time, uh, expand the description below the video. There's a link to a PDF with some musical examples in tab of what we'll cover tonight. Uh, this is a little bit of a different format than what I usually do. Um, so uh, I'm probably going to do a lot more sort of talking and playing off the cuff and a lot more explanation. Uh, we're going to probably cover four uh, or five different alternate tunings, starting with a really easy one and kind of go from there. And just, uh, I'm going to give you sort of an overall uh, things to think about that, uh, you know, should ease your fears, uh, as Peter says, uh, about uh, tuning di different tunings on the guitar, and hopefully some tips on how to navigate it. Uh, so yes, please find those links down there. There's also a Guitar Pro uh, format if you have Guitar Pro software, and you can plug that right in, all right? Excellent. We've got Elias. Happy Friday. Welcome, Fedor. What's up? Nikki the dog, of course. Russ, what's going in? Paul, what's happening? Jeff, what's up? And uh, Jeff Zane and Jeff Steen. All right. What's going on? Jim Gregory uh, went to Dead & Co. last week. Dead & Company. Excellent. I, I trust that was a great show. What's up, Tammy? Welcome. Good to see you all. Well, a great turnout. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Uh, we've got Steve in Ohio. What's up? Thanks for joining. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. All right, so uh, I'm starting out. All right, so it was a great show. There you go. Uh, Tammy uses an app for tuning. Better one, better to get one to clip on. Uh, I just find them really handy. Okay, this is sort of a relatively recent invention, the last like sort of five, 10 years. Uh, these clip-on tuners are really great. They just kind of go on your headstock, your guitar, and you just uh, it runs on a little battery. You just clip it on and and uh, and tune real easy and quick. Okay, I don't have to hook up cables or any of that kind of stuff. If you use an app, that's great. Uh, I've got one on my iPhone as well, and that's really handy too. If you don't have the clip-on, right? Whatever you got to do in order to tune. And also, I'll give some uh, uh, tips on how to kind of tune the guitar to itself as well. Um, uh, it's a little challenging in here tonight. It's a little hot. <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to be changing strings and the guitar is going to be kind of moving a little bit. So I might have to fiddle a little bit as we go through these tunings uh, just to get everything in tune because the guitar is going to shift a little bit here and there. Uh, so hopefully it's it's uh, it's okay where you're at. All right. Alonzo, what's up? North Virginia, welcome. Igor from Mexico City, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining, as always. And it's 105 in Tulsa. There you go. It was 100 here today, uh, Middle Tennessee. So, uh, yeah, man. Got to keep warm best you can, all right? Uh, Tux Guitar will open guitar profiles. Well, excellent. M.A., thanks for letting us know that. That's, that's excellent stuff. Steve, welcome. Glad you made it. I'm starting out in standard tuning, okay? And uh, we'll so kind of just go through it as we do. Uh, Martin, hello, hello. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start with sort of the easiest sort of tweak that you can make to open up a whole bu bunch of uh, possibilities. Kenneth, what's up? Welcome. Uh, well, before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, sort of what's the point of doing alternate tunings. And uh, what you'll find is that a lot of popular songs throughout uh, the history of music 
uh, have employed different tunings on the guitar. And, uh, you know, it results in different sounds, different shapes, okay? And uh, there's a couple of ways to think about what's happening here. Um, most of the time, what you'll see as we kind of get into these tunings is that you end up tuning the guitar, all the open strings to an actual chord, which is a little bit different than, uh, you know, standard tuning, which, you know, if you strum it, it's not really a, a chord, right? It's just kind of <laughs> some notes blending together a little bit. Uh, Steve, thanks so much for the kind words on Dead Flowers. Love that one. Uh, we got Dead Flowers of the Stones on Guitar Tricks. It was a recent edition. That was a good one. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit, but, uh, you know, uh, tr people have, have tuned the guitar to different, to, to chords to make it easy to play. You don't have to have a lot of skill, uh, one finger, right? And you can play a chord and we'll get into that a little bit as we kind of move through these. Jay, what's up? Great to see you as always. Excellent. Thanks for joining. Um, but also what it does is it forces sort of the shapes that you already know that you're comfortable with. Uh, start to not do what you expect, okay? So uh, I'm going to go out and, live and say a lot of times you start trying these different tunings and, you know, you know, unless you're super versed in theory, we'll touch on this a little bit, but, you know, unless you're super versed in it, you're not really going to know exactly what's going to come out. And so what you've got is, I believe, a lot of guitar players just playing familiar shapes and getting different sounds and building upon that. And that's why we end up with these sort of iconic songs uh, with different sounds, different open strings ringing, uh, but playing some familiar shapes just in different spots and creating some different sounds. And that tends to spur your creativity a little bit. It gets you out of a rut. Um, you know, if you kind of feel like you've plateaued and you're kind of doing the same things on the guitar, if you try one of these open tunings, it tends to open up some creativity because uh, what you, what you, your usual stuff doesn't sound the same. And sometimes it might sound really bad, but other times it sounds pretty cool. And you're like, hey, let's go with this a little bit. Let's play with this. So they're really fun, really creative to play along with. Okay. All right. So uh, excellent. Ray is here. Excellent. Rodney in Seattle is here and Glenn just made it. All right. Welcome everybody. Um, so I'm going to start really easy and probably most of you are familiar with this tuning. Um, it's just one string being detuned. If I take the low string from standard tuning, right, we've got an E, A, D, G, B, E from the low all the way up. If I take that low string and go down a full step to D, And there's some quick ways to, to do it. Like you can kind of, you know, once you start doing this a lot, you get used to the sound. You can do it really quickly. Okay. Obviously, if you have the clip on tuner, you know, I'm going to check it out here, tweak it up. And what's going to happen is my guitar is going to kind of slip a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of go through everything and just shore it up a little bit. Okay. But, um, you get used to sort of the sound and one way to kind of do it really quickly is to, uh, play the upper D string, the fourth string, right? If this is back up at E, right? And you go, you can kind of, you're tuning to the same note, right? It's just an octave lower. So you can usually kind of hear where it rubs and then when it comes right into being in line, it sounds nice and uh, direct and focused. You hear how it's kind of beating a little bit? It rubs if you're not right on the note. And then as I bring it up, I can get it to stop that beating sound and it sounds right in. Another quick one is the harmonic. It's actually easier to hear on the harmonic. So if you, if you did the 12th fret, low string and the D string, you can kind of hear that a little bit. All right, what's up, Jersey Red, Red Flying V, Felicia, what's going on? Excellent. Okay, so now, first thing you've got is when you play a D chord, now you've got a low open string that you can add in that makes it sound really big and thick. Any D chord, you just add in that low string and it sounds nice and thick. So there you go. Scott, what's up? Okay, so uh, 
in this first example, uh, I've got 1A, okay? I'm just gonna play a little riff to show you how the chord shapes uh, some things to think about about it. So I think it goes something like this. Okay, so uh, I'm playing in that first bar, we're starting off with a D open D power chord. This basically means I'm playing a D chord, but not worried about the high string. And I'm playing it with that open low string, makes it sound nice and thick and big, right? Okay, gonna cut that off and then go to an open A chord, open A string, second fret on the D, G and B string. Again, not worrying about the high string at this point. Now, anything from the A string all the way up hasn't changed. So all your familiar shapes still work, okay? So if you just want to sort of ignore the low D string and just play your A string like, uh, like your A chord like normal, that's going to work just fine, okay? okay? But where it's going to change is your open G chord. Instead of the third fret of the low string, if I do that, it doesn't sound right. It's because I've tuned this low string down a full step. So I have to compensate by moving up a whole step, which is two frets on the guitar. So in order to get a G chord, I'm using my ring finger on the fifth fret of the low string, and I'm gonna curl it to mute the A string. Now I've got the open D, open G string, and I'm still gonna fret with my index finger, third fret of the high string, and I, or sorry, the B string, and I can also bar down and get the high string as well. I didn't tab it, but you can do that. Okay. So there's your G chord in uh, drop D, right? And then I added in a little, a little bluesy thing, open low D string third fret of the low string with a bluesy band. Always sounds great, okay? All right, so that's sort of the first thing that you can kind of do messing around with that drop D thing, okay? Um, what else can we do? If we're thinking about uh, the open E chord, okay? It's not gonna work, right? Because this isn't tuned to E anymore, it's tuned to D. So I'm gonna have to add a finger Okay, so if you can see, I've added a finger onto the second fret of the low string. That's a whole step up from where we're tuned on the open string, which is D. So that's going to give me the E root note. Okay, and then I just have the familiar E shape up top. So now, if you figure out this stuff, you can play your open E. You're just going to have to add an extra finger in there. Okay, but what it's going to do is it's going to take away uh, your full major bar chord, right? Because the root note's got to be the same. So a nice little workaround for this is just to not play the low string when you're going to do uh, a bar chord. So for example, an F chord, instead of playing, barring all six strings, just bar the top two strings and start with the A string. And now you've got a movable bar chord shape you can use in drop D that's going to be as you expect it. Okay. You following me? So I'm going to actually do a lot of these kind of explanations a little bit that don't necessarily, I don't necessarily have any tab for this stuff. So this might be a good one to come back and revisit uh, if you're messing around with some of this stuff. Now, Rodney asked, how do you know when to change to a different tuning? That's completely dependent on the music. Uh, you know, most time it's ju it's just uh, it's a musical choice, right? Uh, you know, it's not uh, that much different from uh, making a musical choice of what type of chord uh, shape you want to play or what chord inversion you want to play, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, it's just a different uh, way to tune the guitar that'll give you some different sounds. Okay. So it's just dependent on what kind of music you want to play, whether you want to be creative and try different tuning or whether a specific song that you're learning requires a special tuning, an alternate tuning that you need to kind of retune your guitar and do that. Okay. But it's completely a musical choice. It's sort of arbitrary, if that makes sense. Okay. 
Scott's asking, what is that chord called without the low E? Well, uh, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the bar chord. Okay, you can still think of it as that full major chord. So for example, F, I'm not playing the root of the F, which would be on the first part of the low string, but I'm playing all five of the upper notes of it. So I mean, technically this would be an F slash C chord, which tells you that the lowest note is a C and not the F. But you know, you don't even really need to think of it that way. That makes it a little bit too complicated. Just know that you can play your major and minor bar chords without the low string in this tuning and still get it, okay? If that makes sense. Uh, John's asking the same thing. So what is the F chord in drop D? It's still an F chord, okay? The only thing we've moved is the low string. So if you don't play the low string, it's not gonna affect any of the other chords that you already know on the standard tuning uh, five strings that you've got for the rest of the guitar, okay? Uh, Elias is asking what the main difference is between alt tuning and using a capo to get different sound. Oh, the main difference is that when you use a capo, you're still in standard tuning, but you're changing the key that you're in. Okay. When I uh, tune to an alternate tuning, I'm changing the pitch of some of the strings. Okay. So that's going to change the chord shapes and where you know all your scale patterns and all that kind of stuff. That's all going to shift because I, I'm moving the strings are, to a different pitch, okay? So it's totally different than using a capo. And in fact, a lot of people will still use a capo with an alternate tuning, but you just use your new shapes and new scale patterns, okay? Uh, let's see, maybe if you're trying to use slide mixed in, there you go, yeah, exactly. A lot of these alternate tunings uh, you know, are really nice for slide because uh, the slide, uh, is basically up and down on all, it could be all six strings or any version of those. And uh, so a lot, some of these as we're coming up to are tuned to a chord. So it always sounds good to just move it around, right? Now, John's asking if I still strike the low E, no. So um, on those bar chords, okay, I'm just striking from the A string all the way up. I'm completely not using the low E for all those familiar chords you want to play, all right? But just think about if there's chords that you want to play that have a low uh, root note on the low string, you're going to have to make an adjustment. And we'll talk a little more about this as we get into some of these more substantial tunings. You're going to have to think about what the pitches of the strings are and how to compensate for what you're trying to do. So just like what I said for the G chord, instead of doing the third fret, you're going to have to do the fifth fret of the low string. So it requires different fingers and a different way to kind of visualize how that chord sounds. Okay. Hopefully that gets to your questions. Uh, you know, I know this is, this can kind of be a little bit squirrely at first. Uh, if you're not used to this kind of thing, I'll try to go as slow and uh, be as uh, um, informative as I can about this stuff. But, uh, you know, like it'll sink in the more that you kind of uh, um, dig into this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So that was the first example, just to show you that the G chord's a little bit different. And I love doing this. Uh, just love that sound for like a bluegrassy or country or kind of a heavy rock thing where you're playing a D power, uh, open D power chord. And you play that third fret of the low string with the bluesy band. That kind of stuff just sounds really good in this tuning, okay? Um, wanted to show you power chords with this because one of the biggest applications of the drop D is easier power chords. Power chords that you can use one finger to do. So normally uh, for a C chord, for example, C5 or a C power chord, I've got to go three, five, and five on the A, D, and G string. Okay? Uh, so if you move that onto the lower string set, you can hit all those notes with just one finger. So for example, our C chord on the low strings is on the 10th fret and you, you just have to strum the low three strings with one finger. And this gets, makes you, uh, or let, 
it lets you move these rather quickly around the low strings, right? So you can get some sort of quicker riffs going. <laughs> So that's a really big um, use of the drop Ds. You'll hear a, a lot of guitarists, a lot of songs feature riffs or kind of power chord stuff. Okay, just on those low strings because it's just one finger and it's, it's sort of easier to play a little bit and you can make quick changes really easy, okay? So I've got an exercise, uh, example 1B where I've uh, put together a chord progression a little bit and I've added some notes up top. And so, uh, yeah, exercise 1B. So uh, looking at the first one, it's an A power chord. So remember, uh, we would normally get an A power chord in the fifth position, right? But we're in drop D, so and it doesn't sound right. We've got to move that root note up two frets. So that's going to be found on the seventh fret of the low A and D string. And now, because it's one finger, what it can let you do is actually um, extend up upon um, higher octave notes of that power chord. So you can add the ninth fret of the G string, 10th fret of the B string, and make a really thick sort of uh, big sounding power chord, okay? okay? Yeah, Danny, absolutely. Okay, now what uh, what you can see is that you've actually got another root note right here in the same uh, seventh fret of the D string, ninth fret of the G string, tenth fret of the B string. That's a, a higher register power chord with the root on the D string. And now what you can do is take that shape and just extend it by barring down with your index finger down to the lower strings on the seventh fret in this case. Now you've got like a thicker power chord. So I'm going to play through this uh, uh, example right now. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, just sort of a, a generic power chord uh, progression, but now you can play it, just moving it all over the neck and have it sound really thick because you've got lower notes, lower roots and fifths and higher roots and fifths all uh, combined together. So it makes for a really big sound. Uh, the question is here, uh, is this still considered a triad? No, we're talking about power chords. Power chords are just root and five, root fifth, okay? and then the higher octaves of those, okay? So that's only two notes. A triad needs three distinct notes in order to be considered a triad, um, which will either make it a major or minor chord or an augmented or a diminished chord, okay? So it needs root thirds and fifths, okay? A triad needs a one, three, five. Power chords just need one, five, okay? Cool, cool. All right, so, uh, you know, just kind of, Going through it pretty quickly, but those are some of the highlights of drop D. And uh, experiment. The biggest thing that I can get you to do is experiment with and come up with cool stuff. Because <clears throat> well, what you'll find by experimenting is you'll come up with cool stuff. Um, because drop D became really in fashion sort of in the 90s, uh, 90s rock. And you hear a lot of... Uh, you can create these sort of power chord shapey stuff that uh, and you're using sort of traditional um, fingerings for this stuff, but combining it with the low string, it gives you really interesting things. For example, um, you know, song from the 90s right he's just messing around in drop tuning okay and this is sort of my point a little bit is that you tune your guitar a little bit differently and you mess around with the shapes that you know and move them around and you stumble upon things that sound kind of cool you don't even really know 
don't even really need to explain it with theory or know what it is. Just go with your ear. And if you think it's cool, kind of develop it, experiment with it. But, you know, he's grabbing a power chord up here with an A string. Okay. And then if you add the low D onto that power chord, you get this weird uh, sus kind of sound. Okay. Okay. That's definitely not a straight power chord sound. That's got an extra note in it where it makes it sound like an add nine or a sus. So it's a little more complex sounding, right? Okay. And these chords are all over 90s music, okay? They just dropped it down and kind of moved around and said, hey, that's cool. Cool riff, right? Don't even know what chords they are. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Does it sound cool, right? So uh, just as an example of, you know, what the kinds of things that you can be doing in uh, alternate tunings, all right? Rusty's asking if Billy Gibbons used these. I'm not sure that Billy uh, did a drop D. I can't, but I know that he's used open tunings, and we're going to talk about that next, like where he's tuned to a chord. In fact, we've got uh, Dust My Broom on Guitar Tricks, and I believe that's in uh, open D, might be open E, I'm not sure. And that's for the slide playing, because the slide is generally easier when you've got it tuned to a chord. Okay? Uh, Tammy's asking if I just tuned it down by ear. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing a long time, so you can kind of just hear the sound of the strings and do it. If you're new to all this stuff, use a tuner, okay, and just go through all the tuning a little bit and just follow. Uh, in the examples, I give you low to high what the notes should be to give you this stuff. Okay? All right. That's exercise one. Let's move down now to exercise two where I explore open D. Okay, so we're already in drop D. Okay. And John will be talking about that one. Uh, Honky Tonk Women is in open G. And that open G is coming up here a little bit later in the session tonight. Okay. So what we're going to do is if we look at this, uh, we've already got the low string to D. We've already got A and D on the fifth and fourth string. But you can see that we're going to go from G down to F sharp, okay? Eric is asking, what's with putting on a capo and retuning? Um, I think uh, with capos, okay, you uh, there's a couple scenarios with capos. Uh, if the first scenario would be if you're staying in standard tuning and put just putting a capo, say, on the fourth fret or the fifth fret or something to play in a different key. A lot of times you have to kind of re make you know check your tuning uh, because uh, you know it kind of the capo presses down in a different spot and it changes the scale length of the strings vibrating so they can kind of go out a little bit so you want to just recheck your tuning every time you place the capo on the fretboard. So in the case of standard tuning, you're going to want to retune to standard tuning, but up how many semitones, right? Each note is going to be up however many frets you're up, okay? Okay, in the case of if you want to do an alternate tuning and then use a capo, I would hold off on putting the capo on until you've stabilized the guitar in the new tuning, in the alternate tuning just with no capo, and then put the capo on and do a fine tuning, okay? So that's what I would do. Audible, what's up? Douglas, what's up? <laughs> okay. So uh, that, you know, two scenarios there, that's what I would recommend, okay? Always kind of uh, um, think about, get the guitar stabilized at the nut, then put the capo on, then do your fine tuning after the capo's on, okay? Dad, gad at the sixth fret. So yeah, that's what you do. So for example, it, you know, we're gonna talk about dad, gad, dad, gad in a second, um, but if you want it on the sixth fret, tune your guitar to dad, gad at the nut, right? Without the capo. Put the capo on the sixth fret and then just fine tune it. Go through the tuning again because it's going to be just a little bit off, right? You want to just adjust it for the new scale length of what the string length is, okay? All right, so uh, let's go. Yes, and of course, a capo is a whole other thing. You start putting it up there, you get some really high sounds, and sometimes you want that. That's awesome. That's great. Um, absolutely, okay? Um, so... Exercise two, uh, we're in the middle of tuning this to an open D chord. 
open D tuning. I've got D, A, D on the low strings. Okay. But what I have to do is move the G down one semitone to F sharp. Now I'm doing this by ear because I can hear it go to the major third of the chord against the root fifth root, major third. Okay. I'm going to check the tune. I'm going to fine tune this afterwards, but to get it in the ballpark, I kind of always do it by ear. Okay. So next B string's got to come down to a, so that's a full step. And then the high string has to come down to D from E. That's another full step. Now I've got all six strings tuned to a chord. This is a D major chord. Okay, now I'm going to double check it with my tuner because tar's kind of shifted a little bit. It's kind of hot in here. So it's just a little bit sharp, a little bit flat on some of the strings. Douglas is saying some guitarists in the past tune to open E, Jimmy Rogers, thumb across all strings, for example. Absolutely. So, and in fact, this is open D tuning. If I was to tune this whole thing up a step the way that it is right now, I would get open E. Okay. It's actually the same tuning, it's just a step apart. Okay. So now I can play my chords. Open strings are a D chord. Okay, where's my five, uh, four chord? It's going to be up five fret, five at the fifth fret. Okay, so from D to G, that's G major, one finger. Okay, and then A major, one finger on the seventh fret. Okay, so. So keep in mind, this is all tuned to a major chord, okay? So how do we get minor chords? Like we can think, okay, um, any major chord is just available to you with one finger, right? Where's the root going to be? Well, we got to think about this is tuned to D. The low string is tuned to D. So you got to know your intervals a little bit, right? D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And then the sharp and flats in between, okay? Okay. Um, and then if you know that, then you can kind of use that anchor point to move to any chord, any major chord you want to, right? Now, minor chord, when I was mentioning tuning this to a chord, you've got root, fifth, root, major third, and then uh, what have we got here? Fifth, root. So we've got roots and fives everywhere, except there's one string that has a major third. That's the G string. Okay. Manuelito is asking to sound good in soloing. Do we have to memorize the fretboard? It sure helps. Um, but the biggest thing is getting your ear tuned into it. Memorize some scale patterns, memorize some licks, memorize the way they sound. And that's how you develop sounding good in soloing. I know it's a huger discussion that we won't get into right now, but that's the short answer. Okay. Um, so in order to find a, a minor chord, what we're going to have to do is uh, move down one fret wherever there's a major third, okay? So obviously we can't fret the whole chord because it's going to be really difficult to kind of, uh, let's see here, to kind of do that with a minor. So what I would do is start with the top three strings because on the G string... You're going to come down one fret and make that a minor third. And then right below it, you've got the root on the D string or the fourth string. Okay, so that's a kind of an easy shape in this open tuning for a minor chord. It sounds a little bit thin, but you've also got this root on the low string, same fret. So you can do that and mute. If you can put it and mute the other strings... 
or if you uh, use all your fingers, I've just made a G minor chord, okay? Just by knowing where the third is, the third's on the G string, and knowing I have to move it down one fret. Now, you can't really do this on the open chord. And I can't go behind the nut to make that sound lower, but you can do it on any of the fretted chords. Okay, so if I had to do a D minor, I'd probably do it up here. And actually, you can use the open strings to your advantage. So you see, all I'm doing is just, you know, your major chords all on the same fret, but your minor, you're going to have to come down one fret on the G string. And then at that point, it's your choice on how you want to fret the other, the lower notes. Okay. A little crash course there. I know that maybe some of this is flying by, but I want to get to all these examples and all these tunings. Okay. Uh, as far as the example goes, exercise 2A sounds like this. Okay, so a really common move in this tuning, open D, and remember, it's the same as open E. Open E is up a full step on all the strings. So it's the same shapes, okay? And... The open strings are going to be an E chord. All right, so this is a, uh, just a play on a stone song. And you can use this simple shape to go between the one and four chord. And this is used all the time in, you know, kind of rock songs or acoustic songs, pop songs. Okay, I'm barring down at the 10th fret here. This is a C chord, right? If I, I've got a, my lowest note is D. The octave is at the 12th fret. If I come down a full step, that's going to be C. Okay. If I add on to that shape, two frets up on the A string, one fret up on the G string, it gives me a triad of the four chord. And then the rest of the notes fall in with that. Okay. That's the idea. And you can play this all over the place. on the open string. Okay, so remember, two frets up on the A string, one fret up on the G string. That's what we're doing in exercise 2A. Um, after that, I'm going to move to the G chord, which is the fifth fret. And it's the same strum. a little variation of this chord, okay? I could have done the four chord triad that I was doing up here. But if I go uh, two frets up on the D string instead of the A string, I get this uh, sus two and four chord, which gives a slightly kind of different sound. You're still on a G chord. So there's another option for you, and uh, you can actually like sort of uh, mimic sort of a typical sus four to the major third to the sus two sound by using single notes on that. Okay. So I'm adding just the, the single note, uh, sixth fret of the G, that turns it into a sus four. Going back to the full bar on the fifth fret makes it a major again, major third. And then if I add the note seventh fret of the D string onto the chord, that makes it a um, actually an add nine. It gives you that sound. Okay, so that's what's going on in the second part of example 2A. Example 2B, uh, just some different shapes here, okay? 
So I've got. Um, let's see. Play it again with the uh, open strings all ringing out here. Okay, so one of the big advantages of doing an open uh, chord, other than uh, open chord as you're tuning, uh, other than the obvious thing is that you can do one finger chords and the whole guitar is tuned to a chord is that you can utilize the open strings with just minimal fretting to outline some of the other chords in the key, okay? So in this example, exercise 2B, all I'm doing is adding two fretted notes and I'm muting the A string, but uh, I'm only doing that to cut because it gets a little muddy down there. It's a little bit low. So I mute that A string. get some really nice open strings ringing out. It sounds a lot richer, particularly on the acoustic guitar. So that's a big attraction of using alternate tunings is to open up those open strings and get them ringing out. And it just makes the music sound a lot richer and more alive, right? Rather than a lot of notes being fretted, which tends to sound a little bit duller compared to the open strings ringing out. So that's what we're sort of hearing with this example, okay? <laughs> doing here so we got to figure it out you know this is an f sharp down here on the fourth fret and the rest of it's an open d chord right so that's a d slash f sharp normally we'd be fretting it kind of like that but here we can kind of outline that with minimal fingerings and take advantage of all those rich open strings okay now i've got the fifth fret of the low string and the g string and with the open strings, it makes a little bit of a sus sound, right? It's a G add nine, so it's a little bit richer, a little more of an extended chord, but sounds really great. Move it up two frets, you've got a similar sound on the A chord. Okay, and then going up to a B minor. Right, move that same shape up. It's a little tense because we have some semitones uh, rubbing against each other. But I think it still sounds cool, particularly when you resolve it. When I end up at the 12th fret on those notes, on the low string and the G string, okay, uh, really resolves it and sounds really nice. Okay, are you with me? I, I think of a song. if anyone recognizes that song but it's sort of what i think of when uh playing these shapes okay so it's uh, very possible that they used a different tuning on the acoustic just to make it sound really rich and full right all right let's see uh, uh russ is asking uh, is this what i saw her dolly parton tune her guitar because her fingernail length uh, could be yeah uh, not, not sure on that 100 percent, but uh that totally could be the case. Uh, you know, the fingernails get in the way a little bit, right? So there you go. Martin's asking uh, for soloing is handing to know a little bit of the fretboard, but as long as you know the bass strings, you're good to go. Um, I would say for soloing, just know how to play off chord shapes, um, know, know your scales, and more importantly, train your ear as you're working on that stuff. Because when you start to experiment with alternate tunings, you're going to have to rely on your ear because things are kind of out of place on the fretboard. Okay. The notes aren't where you expect them to be on some of the frets. So you're going to have to kind of work it out, what things that you need to do, okay? Martin says the most important thing is to express the notes you want to get heard the most. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, Michael's asking, uh, is a lot of grunge tuned down? New to the chat, may have missed it earlier. No problem at all. Yes, a lot of grunge. I was talking about 90s 
music. Uh, it seemed like a lot of grunge was tuned down to drop D uh, or even open tunings. You know, you got Soundgarden and Pearl Jam using open tunings all the time. Okay. Uh, Douglas is asking, might help to do a couple arpeggios on that open D to emphasize the difference to standard tuning. Well, uh, I kind of can. I mean, like we've got the chord here. So we've got a root, fifth, root, fifth root okay so pretty much all of it is a power chord the thing that turns it into a d major is the g string if i add that in that's the third okay so now as far as arpeggios i mean i don't know all the scales in the alternate tunings i don't know arpeggios in the alternate tunings i know some chord shapes and i can get around a little bit but i've been spent what i mean it's hard enough in standard tuning to learn all that stuff in order to kind of transfer scale shapes and all that kind of stuff. All right. So learn as much as you can in standard and then start to think about what's changed on the alternate tuning, learn some shapes, know where you are, what key you're in. Okay. And usually you can get by. Okay. All right. Um, you know, a lot of players personalize what they do, I can think of a lot of players that uh, play exclusively in some alternate tuning, right? And so they've discovered a tuning and they've decided to transfer everything over. So they have to kind of retool everything. You have to learn all your scale patterns. Where are your notes? Where are your patterns? Where are your chord shapes? And there's some guitar players that do that. And that's a personal choice, but it's a lot of work. I've, I'm still trying to learn as much as I can in standard tuning. So I can kind of get around a little bit in these alternate tunings, but really more just sort of some chord shapes messing around and uh you know kind of learning you know some famous songs in these kind of uh, uh alternate tunings that's what i'm about uh level i'm at uh scott's asking if i have a go-to shape that i use in alternate tuning yeah most of the time it's uh if i'm tuned to an open chord you just kind of start with the with the one finger and then you kind of play around with uh your other fingers to see where the other notes are and kind of go from there. Okay, that's what I do. Not really a specific go-to. Uh, Rick, it's giving us kind words. I appreciate it. Igor, thank you. Uh, Martin's asking, you don't need to use the chords. You can play a melody of the bass line. Absolutely. It's, it's wide open for you to kind of experiment, right? Yeah, King 50's got it. The Collective Soul song. You got it. Right on. Uh, Manuelito is asking, uh, full access just expired. Uh, am I still allowed to book one a one-on-one -on -one lesson. I'm not sure. Um, admin at guitartricks.com. Maybe uh, email them directly. They're usually pretty accommodating. Admin at guitartricks.com. Okay. All right. Uh, so a couple examples in open D. Like I said, open E is just, uh, you would tune every string up a full step. Okay. Um, I tend to like coming down on the guitar. I don't like to kind of really go far up on the uh, tuning up on a guitar because uh, that's when strings tend to snap a little bit. So uh, another tip, uh, go slow when you're tuning these, okay? Particularly when you're tuning a string up beyond where it is in standard tuning, that's usually where the tension gets to a point where, uh, you know, if you go too fast, it might just snap the string right off, okay? <laughs> so be careful. All right. Chad is checking in on the iPad right on. He's got a new Mac on the way. I love it, man. Awesome. No, we have not done Open G yet. Martin, we're getting there. I hope we can get there. We still got uh, we we got 12 minutes left here. So uh, Open G. Well, we might have to continue this next week, okay? Because uh, you know I'm doing a lot of talking in between these exercises. So the next uh, exercise, exercise three, is Dad Gad. Okay, and I think it was mentioned earlier in the uh, chat. And if you have a look, it's basically an open D tuning, but you tune the G string back up to G. And that's going to give you a sus4. Okay, now you don't have a major third in the chord of the open string. Now it's a sus4, so it's a little bit different. Okay. Just double check the tuning. I think we're a little out here. Paula, 
apologize, everybody. The guitar kind of goes, it's a combination of the heat. All right. So you can tell it's a floaty sound right here. Um, so, but you can kind of figure out some uh, open shapes here. So uh, I've got uh, sort of a, uh, an example here that shows some open chord shapes as well as a cool approach to use uh, that utilize the uh, open strings. And Chad, yes, live may very well have used open uh, tunings. I'm not sure 100%, but uh, that could be. Okay, Steve, we are on exercise three, which is dad gad. Okay, dad gad. Working our way to open G. I'm not sure we're going to get there tonight. We'll, we'll tune in next week. All right. Um, That's my exercise. Okay, you're gonna play it one more time just to hear how you know kind of cool it sounds. The chords sound different, right? Okay, so there's a lot of notes here that are in different spots than we're uh, used to. Okay, so the first one's a G chord. And you're fretting the second fret of the A string, and you're also fretting the second fret of the B string. It turns out everything else fits with a G chord, right? Uh, a major. Okay, at this point, you want the open A string, second fret uh, barring down on the D and G string. Okay, check it out. You've got the A string, D string, and G string the same, okay? The rest of them are tuned down a step, okay? Your low string, B string, and high string are tuned down a step. So anything familiar on the A, D, and G strings in this particular tuning, dadgad, okay, is going to work from standard tuning, right? So you can see the lower part of this is an A power chord. That's like a normal fingering, but because the B string is down a full step, you have to compensate for that. Two frets up is going to get you the major third of the A chord. Okay? So there it is. And you've got a really cool B minor 7 voicing right here. Second fret on the A string, second fret on the third and second strings. The rest open. Really nice sound. Then I repeat the G to A. So here's a cool approach that, that uh, really takes advantage of those open strings is to find where your octaves are, okay? So in this case, I'm using the A string and the G string to play octaves, okay? Because it, we've already said that shape works just like the alternate, uh, just like the standard tuning. So if I get a D octave right here and combine it with all the open strings, sounds really thick. And I'm just going to go up a step and another step, like basically going up the major scale, but with octaves. Now I'm on the major third, so I'm really highlighting a D major chord with that octave shape. Really cool. So experiment in the key of D major with octaves against the open strings, and you can come up with anything you want. You know? See what I mean? Take these examples, take these approaches, and just kind of mess around with them. You're going to come up with some really cool stuff. And of course, all those strings ringing out really adds a lot of richness, right? So there you go, the final chord there. I'm just grabbing the second fret of the third string, fourth fret of the fourth string, okay? Which is your D major, okay? 
so some different shapes, right? But uh, once, it, once you learn a few of the different shapes and move some stuff around, you can really start to kind of add some stuff and uh, come up with some cool stuff, right? Cool. All right. Uh, let's move around. Let's think about this a little bit. Um, oh, I have another dadgad riff. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy Page's favorite as uh, Scott has uh, – so aptly put in the comments here. Uh, so yeah, you might recognize this riff. Again, using some, some different shapes, top four strings. Some of you might recognize that song, but wow, some cool shapes, right? And I'm sure he just stumbled upon, he wasn't thinking about theory when he did this, right? He just stumbled upon some notes and some shapes. Right? And if you check it out, you've got the 12th fret, right? So this is, you got the G sus up at the 12th fret. And if you come down one fret, that's where you get the major third. So you're going from the sus four to the major third. That's that sound. And then he's sort of like, well, I like the way that sounds with the open strings. What if I move just that little simple thing? Move it down two frets. Right? Move it down another three frets. Two frets. Two frets. Right? And just add in a really simple melodic idea, right? Boom. Next thing you know, you've got an iconic riff, right? Okay. And I love these tunings because uh, you start moving shapes around. You know, some of them don't necessarily sound that great, right? But... jamming on it. I don't know what's going to come out, but I'm using my ear. What sounds kind of cool, right? Okay. All the shapes are a little bit foreign. Right, but you kind of just go with your ear and just kind of take it to wherever uh, it's going to take you. You know, follow it to wherever it leads you. Okay. Um, I apologize for not getting through everything tonight. Okay, but uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about with this subject, so we'll pick it up again next week. Okay, there'll be a part two. I will put up. I'll probably amend this a little bit. Might add a few more things just for next week. Uh, but we still got a couple tunings to go, right? So I'll add a couple more and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Uh, I, I know that some of the concepts here are a little bit more advanced, but, uh, you know what? Just don't be afraid to just, uh, dig in and try this stuff and try to mess around a little bit and just see what sounds cool. Okay. Um, don't ever be afraid of learning a song that, you know, if you have a tab or a transcription that has a, a little bit of a different tuning, it's always worthwhile to try that stuff, okay? And uh, you get to kind of learn some different shapes. You get to hear the, the open strings ringing against each other and uh, really op can open up some cool ideas and uh, creativity, okay? Thanks so much. Peter, appreciate it. Steve in NH, thank you. Theodore. Scott, Igor, thank you. John, Jody One, all right, awesome. Uh, Rusty, my man, thank you as always. Nikki the dog, Rad Flying V as always. Jim Gregory, <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, HH, thanks so much. Yes, absolutely. Uh, catch up on the replay. 
have an amazing time up in Northern Ontario in the summer. That's going to be beautiful. Uh, awesome on that. Excellent. Excellent. Jason. Thank you. Excellent. King 50. Thank you. Steve got a lot out of the dad gad and drop D. Excellent. Still trying to wrap your head around open D. Okay. Well, we're going to do some open, uh, more open chord stuff. Okay. So uh, next week, tune in. All right. Martin, thank you. M.A., thank you. Jay, thank you. Craig, thank you. Uh, Danny <laughs> it took some, was working on Caged and had to take an aspirin. I, I uh, hear you, brother. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, glad this was a welcome distraction for you. Uh, hopefully you guys find it inspiring and uh, try out some stuff. All right. Alonzo, thank you. Glenn, thank you. <laughs> There you go, HH. Your task is to bring back some cooler weather to the south here. We're dying. <laughs> Martin, listen, uh, we're, we do regular chord shapes all the time. All right. So check out this channel, Guitar Tricks channel. Look at the live lessons. I've been on here for the last two years doing sessions and literally every other session I do regular chord shapes. So check it out. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Gerald. Thanks so much. Thanks, Manuelito. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend into next week. We'll see you next week, same time. Take care, everybody. <laughs>